Professor Stokes. I, I am desperate. How vulgar mice and china can be. Aren't you listening to me? I called you because, because you must stop these dreams. You sound as if they are my fault, Doctor. Well, that has occurred to me. You're responsible for Cassandra Collins being in this family. I'm very fond of power, but I've never had enough to make any man marry any woman. If you really don't trust me, Doctor. I don't know. I suppose I do. You must decide, of course. Otherwise, I should be wasting both our time. Uh, but in my defense, you must remember that you came to me about the dreams. I knew nothing about them. You were the only person I could think of who, who might be able to tell me what they mean. Oh, Professor, I, I trust you. I, I, I must, because the dream keeps coming closer and closer to Barnabas. Yes, I'm sure it does. Whoever started the dream is determined that Barnabas Collins died. Oh, or something worse happened. Is there anything worse? Do tell me. I, I didn't mean... It was a pointless remark. I don't think so. No remark about Barnabas Collins ever is. The more I study the dream, the pattern of it, the more I realize that. You, you have reached some conclusions then? Thank heavens, because poor Willie Loomis is going through such hell. Each time the dream becomes more terrible. According to my calculations, only one more person must have the dream, a woman. And that woman may make it possible for Barnabas Collins never to have the dream. Then the curse will be stopped. Tell me, tell me how. How curious to meet a doctor who hasn't learned patience. You will know in good time. First, I must check out my findings with you. It is most important, for if one of my calculations is wrong, we will have lost. Here is something I want to show you. Tell me who this woman is. Do you know? Yes, it's Josette Dupre. But uh, who does it look like? But it looks like Maggie Evans. Exactly. But it's not. It is Josette Dupre, a love of the first Barnabas Collins. This picture was one of the first clues I had. When I met Maggie Evans, I wondered why she should be the first to dream. The witch has a sense of humor. To get at Barnabas, he started with Josette. But Maggie is not Josette, and this Barnabas Collins is not the same one who lived in the 18th century. But they are interchangeable, aren't they? They look the same, act the same. My curiosity about Barnabas Collins is partly the result of my reflections on the dream. In order to verify my assumptions, I must know certain personal facts about him. Facts which you may not be willing to give me. I... I will try. Will you, Doctor? Honestly? Yes. Maggie Evans was the first to dream. Then Jeff Clark. Did either have a close relationship to Mr. Collins? No, not at all. Just as I thought. But the third dreamer, Dr. Lang, I believe, did. Yes. Then you had the dream. Was Barnabas Collins going through a difficult period in any way? Dr. Lang, and you had the dream. Yes. Yes, indeed, yes, he was. But he wasn't when Maggie Evans or Jeff Clark had it. No. Then the dream went to Mrs. Johnson, then to little David. Obviously, Mr. Collins' personal crisis had resolved itself and the dream went to comparative strangers. But now, with Willie Loomis. Yes, he, he is going through a difficult time of it. So I gathered. Where is Willie Loomis? Oh, he's in his room. I, I locked him there. He wanted to tell Carol in the dream. She was the beckoner in his dream. And if he tells her, He then... must. Because the beckoner in Carolyn Stoddard's dream will be Barnabas Collins. Then he must never tell her. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting about me, Dr. Hoffman? I can be the beckoner in Carolyn Stoddard's dream. Not Barnabas? But, but, but how? how? How will you do that? There may be a way. I'm willing to take a chance. If it works. And that means 
if I live. Barnabas Collins will be saved. Are you willing to take a chance with me? Yes. Yes, I think so. Good. Then bring Carolyn Stoddard here. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> 